Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about cross sections and then getting into surface area of prisms and cylinders. So let's start off with a little bit of vocab. First, a polyhedron is a solid that is bounded by polygons called faces that enclose the region of space. Uh, an edge is a line segment formed by the intersection of two faces of the polyhedron. And a vertex is the point at which three or more edges of the polyhedron meet. So if we look at this polyhedron, which in this case is a square based pyramid, we have the whole thing is a polyhedron, it's the whole solid. An edge is one of these. These are also edges. All right, and then a vertex is going to be any point in which the edges meet or the faces meet. So this would be a vertex. All right, now we're actually going to have specific types of edges also. We're going to have base edges, so this would be a base edge, and we're going to have lateral edges. And that may come into play later, but just kind of to give you a little bit of an introduction there. All right, so if we want to figure out how many uh, faces or edges or vertices we have, we have what's called the Euler's formula. And what his formula says is that the sum of the number of faces, which we'll call F, the number of vertices, which we'll call V of a polyhedron, it equals two more than the number of edges. So if we write that out as a formula, it looks like F plus V equals two plus E really nice simple equation that we can use to find out um, all sorts of things about polyhedron. So let's look at an example really quick. If a polyhedron has 30 edges and 20 vertices, so E is 30 and V is 20, I want to figure out how many faces do we have. So if we plug those into our formula, we have faces plus 20 equals 2 plus 30. All right, so if I have uh, F plus 20 equals 32, then I have to have 12 faces. So there's using our formula and the relationship between faces, edges, and vertices. All right, next we're going to talk about cross sections. So a cross section is the intersection of a solid and a plane. So it's kind of like thinking about a really thin slice of a solid. So let's look at an example and try to visualize. These are going to be real visual pieces here. So if I have this cylinder, what is the cross section if it was sliced from top to bottom? So if we want to think, what does it look like if I slice this thing from top to bottom? So if I take just a slice out of the whole thing vertically from top to bottom, what does that exposed edge look like? So maybe I could draw this a little better here. If I take from top to bottom and I slice it, the exposed part of my cylinder is going to look like that. That's what we call a cross section. And in this case, it would be a rectangle, would be our cross section. If we took a, a, a cylinder and did a vertical cross section. Now, what if we sliced it horizontally? What if we took a cross section horizontally? What would that look like? Well, in this case, it would really just look like this circle here. This would be the cross section horizontally of our cylinder. So it would look just like that circle if we crossed it. So there is the answer for that. So cross sections are really about uh, visualizing slices of solids. Okay, so um, let's look at our first piece of vocabulary for prisms. So I've already introduced a little bit of this. We have a prism is a polyhedron with two congruent faces, and those are called the bases of the prism. So in this diagram here, we have a hexagonal uh, prism, and the two hexagons would be the two bases. So here's a base and here's a base. They're the two um, congruent parallel faces. All right, a lateral face is the faces that are formed by connecting the vertices of the base, making parallelograms. 
So this here, this parallelogram and all of the other parallelograms is what we call a lateral face. All right, a lateral edge is the edge of the lateral face, so connecting two lateral faces. So this here would be a lateral edge, just like we talked about a second ago. All right, an altitude. Now, an altitude is a perpendicular segment that joins the planes of the bases. So if I went from one base all the way up to the, the upper base, um, then in perpendicular, that would be my altitude. So in this example, it's actually a little tricky. If I want perpendicular from the base to the top base, it would actually be this piece here. So this right here would be my altitude. So sometimes it's inside the figure, sometimes it's out of the figure, sometimes it's actually one of the edges of the figure. All right, look, the height is the length of the altitude. So altitude, you can kind of think of as the same as height. Um, right prism, now right prism is when the lateral edges are perpendicular to the bases. So a right prism is one that stands perfectly tall. So um, perfectly 90 degrees up and down. An oblique prism is when the lateral edges are not perpendicular to the bases. So this example over here, let me just make it here. This example, this would be an oblique prism because the two bases are not right on top of each other. It doesn't stand perfectly up. Um, it slants it a little bit. So it's not perpendicular. So that would be an oblique prism. All right, so now let's do some formulas. So we have a surface area of prisms and surface area of cylinders. Now, um, one easy way to think of surface area is just find the area of all faces and add them together. So area of the surfaces, all combined. So here, our lateral area, if I had, um, let's make this uh, length times width times height. Okay, so we have length, width, and height. All right, our lateral area would be the perimeter of the base times the height. And I know that that seems a little strange, but if we think about all the lateral faces, those are all rectangles, and two of them, the front one here and the back one, are going to have the dimension of L times H. The two side ones are going to have W times H. So if I take L, L, W, and W and multiply them all by H, that's just the perimeter of the base times the height. So that'll give us the area of all of the lateral faces. All right, and now the surface area would be that lateral area plus two times the area of the base. So let's write just a little note here. P is perimeter of the base, and B is the base area. All right, so there is our surface area of a prism formula. Again, if you forget the formula, you can always just find the areas of all the pieces and add them together. Now a cube is a little different. If we think about a cube, all of the areas are the same. And there's six faces on a cube that are all congruent. The area of each face is E squared, and we have six of them. So we've got six E squared. That one's a little easier, which is nice. All right, let's look at an example. So if I want to find the surface area of this prism, I can follow my formula, which is pH plus 2B. And what that means is perimeter of the base, so that's going to be uh, 12 plus 6 plus 12 plus 6 times the height. And because this is a right prism, I know that all of these are perpendicular. So I know that 8 is my height, plus 2 times the area of the base, which is 12 times 6 because there's a top and a bottom. So what we're really doing here, if we think about it, we have 12 by 8 for the front part and another 12 by 8 for the back part and then 6 by 8 for the two sides. That's the lateral area. That's this section here. So in this problem, that's going to be 288 plus... Uh, the base area, which is 72 
times two. Well, I'll just put two times 72 here. All right, and then if I add all of those together, we end up with 432 inches squared. We always square our inches for area. All right, so now let's go to the cylinder. A cylinder is just like a prism, but with a circular base. So if we think about the perimeter of the base, the perimeter of a circle is what we call circumference. So the um, here is going to be 2 pi r. That's our perimeter of the base times the height. It's the same formula, just now we have a circle. And so the surface area is going to be the circumference times the height, perimeter of the base times the height, plus 2 times the area of the base, which is pi r squared, because it's a circle. So it looks super confusing, but it's really the exact same formula as the prism, just with a circular base. All right, so let's do this example. We have the circumference of the base, which is 2 pi times the radius, which is 6 times the height, which is 4, plus the uh, top and bottom areas, so 2 times pi times the radius squared. And then we just want to simplify that all. We've got uh, 48 pi plus 72 pi, and that's going to be 120 pi. And then we look for our units. We have centimeters squared. All right. And it's going to take a little bit of practice to really get used to these formulas, as it always does. Okay, let's look at our last few examples. Do a few more pieces to practice here. All right, so let's look. Surface area of the right prism, hint, shade the bases. So what we want to do when we're trying to find the bases, we want to find the two um, faces that are congruent and parallel to each other. Now, technically, in a rectangular prism, what we have first here, all of the faces have a parallel congruent uh, partner. So it really doesn't matter. I usually just go top and bottom when I've got a rectangular prism. So if I shade those, then it's a little easier to see what's going on. Um, let's try to do these without the formula. Sometimes that's good to see another method here. So if I think about this, I have top and bottom and four sides. So I have six different pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to find all the areas of those faces and add them together. So I have 2 times 2, which is 4, and I have another 2 times 2 on the top. So top and bottom, the area is 4. Then on my sides, I've got 2 times 9, and I actually have 4 of those. So they're all the same. 2 times 9, 2 times 9, 2 times 9. If I add those all together, I end up with 80 centimeters squared. So this is another way to find the surface area. In case you forget the formula, or maybe you think that this is just simpler anyways, go with it. All right, number 10, we have surface area. So again, shade the bases. Now here, there's only one correct base. It's these triangles. The two triangles are the bases of the prism because they're congruent and parallel. If we look at the other three faces, they don't have a congruent parallel match. So those are our lateral faces. All right, so let's look. Area of the base, or area of the triangles, are going to be 1 half 3 times 4. So 1 half times 3 times 4 is 6. And I have two of those. So it's going to be 6 plus 6. And then I have three rectangles. And if we look, they all have slightly different dimensions. Now the bottom rectangle is 4 by 3. So there's 12. Okay, my um, the rectangle that's kind of standing up in the back is 3 by 3, which is 9. All right, if, you're, if I'm losing you here, that's this rectangle here. That's 3 by 3. And then we have this rectangle on the slant. And if we look, we know that this part's 3, but I don't have the other um, slanted dimension. So I can use Pythagorean theorem. It's a right triangle. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. Square root gives me 5. So once I find that, then I know that rectangle is 5 by 3, which is 15. We add those all together, and I end up with 48 inches squared. So again, I'm not really using the formulas. The formulas are nice, but you can also find these without them, just finding the pieces and adding them all together. All right, so now let's look at a cylinder. 
Uh, we want to find the surface area. So we have a diameter of 10 inches. Remember, our surface area involves the radius. So we want to take this radius, the diameter, and split it in half to find the radius. All right, now let's use our formula. So we have the circumference of the base, or perimeter of the base, is 2 times pi times the radius. Oops, well, I can just put pi here. 2 times radius times pi is the same thing. All right, so times the height, and it's a right cylinder, so I know that it's already perpendicular. The height is perpendicular to the base. Plus 2 times the area of the base, which is pi times r squared, which is 5 squared. And then we want to simplify this. So here we're going to have 80 pi plus, let's see, 200 pi. And that's going to give, oops, I'm sorry, that's not 200. 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50, 50 pi. And 80 plus 50 is 130 pi inches squared. All right, now the cylinders, because it's a, a rounded piece and you don't really have a face where you can calculate the area easily of that lateral face, you really need to memorize that formula. Formula is the way to go with cylinders. All right, let's look at the last example. This one's going to go backwards a little bit. So we want to solve for x given the surface area of 208 square meters round to the nearest 10. So we're going to use our surface area formula. Let's write it out. So 2 pi rh plus 2 pi r squared. And we're going to plug in our parts. Surface area is 208. 2 pi, my radius is 3. And I'm looking for the height, which is x plus 2 pi, my radius is 3 squared. Now I have an equation I can solve for x. So I have 208 equals 6 pi x plus 18 pi. I'm going to subtract my 18 pi from both sides. And because this has pi but the 208 doesn't, we cannot subtract those pieces. They're not like terms. So we leave them separate. And then to get x by itself, I want to divide by 6 pi, divide everything by 6 pi, and carefully use your calculators. When you're using your calculators, don't forget to put 6 pi in parentheses to group them both in the denominator. All right, and then x is going to be approximately 8.0. And now be careful, we're not solving for area here. We're just solving for one of the lengths of one of the dimensions of our cylinder. So it's just meters, not meters squared. All right, and that concludes her lesson for today. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.